M1 Global presents Тренировочный сбор мы проводили в Старом Осколе. У нас в этот раз получилась очень хорошая команда. Меня готовила это брат Вадим Ников, Кирилл Сидельников, Анатолий Токов, Валентин Молдавский. Тренировочный сбор мы провели очень хорошие, наборолись, набоксировали. Я думаю, что в предстоящем бою мне удастся показать очень хороший бой и показать все мои сильные стороны. I'm going back in the light heavyweight division because uh, uh, heavyweight is uh, I'm very small for heavyweight and uh, this is my weight class is light heavyweight and best for me. Neukom is a good opponent for me. Uh, is a good striker, everything, and this fight uh, is going uh, my things in the stand-up fight. My star target in the uh, M1 in the best organization and my dream in the uh, win and the light heavyweight uh, belt. Соперник у меня очень опытный боец, у него за плечами очень много боев, также он левша, для меня это не очень удобно, но над этим аспектом много работали. Я думаю, что в этом бою все сложится благополучно для меня. This is absolutely a pivotal crossroads fight for both men. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an M1 challenge bout in the light heavyweight division. Now introducing your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 31 years old. He weighed in at 93 kilograms. He stands 188 centimeters tall and has an impressive record of 29 wins, seven losses with only two draws. He is a Kempo Karate black belt. Bellator Grand Prix winner, former Bellator light heavyweight champion and World Free Fight Association champion, representing MMA spirit from Germany, Attila Vey. And now welcome his opponent in the red corner. This fighter is 29 years old. He weighed in at 93 kilograms. He stands 185 centimeters tall and has a professional record of 22 wins with only six losses. He is winner of World Combat Sambo 2009, World Combat Sambo Champion 2011, winner of the first season of M1 Fighter Reality Show and former M1 Challenge Light Heavyweight Champion from Alexander Nevsky, Russia, Viktor Nemkov! And your referee for this bout, Marco Bruersen. Red corner, blue corner, center of the right. Both know the rules. Listen to my command. Protect yourself all times. Make it a good match. Shake hands. Step back to your corner. Our main event of the evening, M1 Step Challenge back. 71 from Ice Palace in stunning St. Petersburg, Russia. With Ian the Machine Freeman, I'm Sean Wheelock. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Judge. Attila Veg from Slovakia, Judge. now based Stand in ready. Germany, versus the Russian in his home country, Judge. Viktor Nemkov. The bell in round number one. Black grappling pants for Veg. Black and gray trunks for Nemkov. Well, I said in my early, earlier introduction that Veg needs to keep this standing. But let's take nothing away from Nemkov. He's got an unbelievable striking ability. I just think that Ve has the edge when it comes to the stand-up striking. They just misses with the right hand. 
Interesting, Machine, that Vega's wearing grappling pants because he has made his name, made his reputation in mixed martial arts as a striker and often a one-punch knockout striker. He showed that against Travis View and Bellator. Yeah, he's coming off a, a three-fight loss streak. He may be a little bit worried to push the pace until he feels comfortable, but you know, he's a professional. He knows what he's doing. He's going to go for the knockout sooner rather than later, I think. But he's not going to take any chances. Constant circling from Veg. Nemkov, as you see, pivoting, holding the center of the M1 ring. Step in right hand from Nemkov, then circles out. Yeah, Vane needs to be careful rushing in like that. One of the worst things you can do if you get tagged with the right hand down the pipe as you're moving forward. Oh, nice counter. Overhand right. Big landing that inside kick, not fully turning it over. Snap jab, just misses from Nemkov. Big now moving forward, hands high from the southpaw stance. Yeah, very stalker. There's the shot. I thought that was going to come sooner or later. No real commitment to that takedown again from Nemkov. Nagneri had to defend that. 2.45 remaining round number one. The fighters very much still in the respectful feeling out process. Nemkov trying to take that to the ground. I think Nemkov got tagged on the way in. I could be wrong, but it, he seemed to, he definitely he seemed to did. wobble a little bit as he went down. He definitely did with the right hand. Vegna now holding the body triangle from the bottom. Oh, oh, right to the shoulder. There's the warning from Marco Burson. Well, just to clarify that in some parts of Russia, you're allowed to headbutt the body, and that's what Nemkov did. That's why the referee, Marco Burson, was a little bit lenient there. Just the warning. Big posturing on his hip, trying to explode. Good control of the legs by Victor Nemkov, now taking the back. Oh, not where Attilave wants to be. Does well to get back up. Tries to work the inside hook, gets it. Big knee to the thigh. Big warned by Burrison, grabbing the ropes. Keep your hands inside. Burrison now telling Veg you need to bring your hands inside the ring. Although Vey wasn't holding the ropes, he thought it was legal enough to put his hands on the outside, but still illegal if in case you get dragged down, you're gonna hook onto the rope. Those are powerful, thudding knees. Yeah, until Vey just kind of cannot turn into him. He's trying. Nemkov relentless on the right thigh of Attila Vey. Very much shots of attrition. Now to the hip with the knee. Look away punch, that lands from Veg. Nemkov does not move. 60 seconds remaining in the opening round of our main event in the light heavyweight division. Attila Veg versus Victor Nemkov. The first look away punches from Veg. Got very much between the ring ropes now is Attila yeah. Veg. In an awkward position here. But Burson continues to allow this to flow. If, now, if, if Faye falls out too much like that. Oh, Faye stepped over yeah, to get out of that yeah, position. That was, that was a little bit of a tactic by Faye. I'm going to say they will start it. You're not going to step outside. That leg is not going out with you. Turn around, turn Burson, around. Burson very stay firm inside, there. They trying to get the center of the ring restart. Burson not allowing it. If if they had collapsed and fell through the ring, they might have restarted on its feet in the center. But because he stepped through, it was a blatant misuse of the rules. Nemkov with the body lock. Veg just absolutely stuck. More big knees from Victor Nemkov. Final seconds, round number one. We're going to round two. You have to stay inside the ropes. Well, not a lot that Attila Vey could have done there. You know, you, you bent over double with your head outside the ropes. It's, 
you know, it, it, where do you train for that? It's it's kind of awkward, but you know, good round for Victor Nemkov. Definitely took that round for me. 10-9, first round. Well, there's a nice body shot, but retaliated with the left hook. And I'd like to see the little bit of a later, that was the same hook. When Victor Nemkov shoots in to see if he got tagged on the way in, because he seemed to wobble. But now, we've gone straight to the ropes. And this was it for the last minute, he stepped over, which is blatant misuse of the rules. Into the corner, Victor Nemkov. Stefan Butz. In the corner, Matilda Vey. His teammate and training partner in Germany. Butz opening M1 Challenge 71. With a very strong performance. Not with your hand. Third round Foul. submission victory Foul. versus Marcus Vinicius Lopez. Vic trying to make it two for two for his German two. fight team this evening. Wait. But again, machine on your unofficial scorecard. Hey, I fully agree. Stop. Round one, 10 9 to Victor Nemkov. Red corner, red corner. Oh, I need new glove. Time call, oh, Marco Burrison saying glove. he needs a new right glove for Attila Vang. Yeah, the thumb, the leather of the thumb is actually off. ripped. could be a lengthy delay. I'm sure they could just cut the, the, the leather off because there's plenty of gloves out there without without thumb. It's, it's just a big hole where you stick your thumb through, so I'm surprised they didn't get... They could easily just get a pair of scissors and cut that off. It wouldn't affect the fight, wouldn't affect the punch. See the rip on the thumb? So they have to take off the tape, take off the glove, find a new glove, put on the new glove, and then put on new glove tape. Which we can only hope is blue. <laughs> the tape of the glove. <laughs> well, I hope they've got some ringside. Victor Nemkov staying in the neutral corner. Not allowed to speak to his corner during this timeout. Well, as you see there, the glove with the thumb. It has a little bit of padding that's to protect, protect the knuckle of the thumb. But there's plenty of gloves out there, thousands of gloves out there, which do not have a thumb at all. It's just a big hole. So I couldn't see where the harm would have been if they got the doctor or the corner man to get the scissors and cut that thumb off. A strange, even awkward round number one. Vague literally trapped between the ring ropes. Nemkov holding the body lock as we saw in the opening round. Vague trying to free himself of that bad position, stepping out. Referee Marco Burrison telling him that's not allowed. Did not give Vague the center ring restart that he was hoping for, instead putting him right back in that position. Well, I said that Vague would be a little bit nervous coming into the fight because he's had a three fight loss. He doesn't want to rush anything, but now that he knows he's a round down and there's only three rounds in this fight, I think he may come out firing. He might think, I've got nothing to lose. I'm, I'm down around. I need to gain that round back. And this is a perfect rest for him to do it. Vague's corner was just giving him advice, telling him to hit the leg kick. That is not allowed. You see Nemkov correctly staying in the neutral corner. And you know, as someone who corners a lot of fighters, you get away with what you can get away with. Of course. It's only illegal if you get caught. Not that I've done anything illegal, man, Sean. <laughs> I've never done anything illegal. I'm a, I'm a straightforward saint. And if you believe that. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the illegalities of mixed martial arts, there are worse things than to talk to your fighter during a timeout. <laughs> so thankfully, there's a new glove. We are mere moments away from the resumption of round number two. Can, can I just clarify this um, <laughs> this illegal thing? I've never done anything illegal in MMA. Maybe, <laughs> maybe outside of MMA, but not in MMA. You're sending people to Google now, you realize yes, that. Yes, I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can honestly say MMA kept me out of jail, so it's one good thing. It's, it, it put me on the straight and narrow. 
And now look at me, traveling the world doing this job. It's fantastic. A guy from Newcastle, a guy from Kansas, and here we are in St. Petersburg, living the life. So here we go with round number two. See how this delay affects Viktor Nemkov, who clearly had the momentum entering this second round. Solid round number one for Nemkov, even with the awkwardness of Veg being trapped between the ring ropes. Straight right hand from Nemkov. Yeah, nice retaliation over the left hook by Veg. Oh, he went for the overcut and missed it. Nemkov to the inside. Nemkov getting on the hips, looking for the takedown. Good, good defense from Veg. Good, good, good defense. Veg now looking to pull his guard. guard. With a this would be a shock, but his head's free. So tough to get from that position. Beck was not looking for the takedown, felt he was being taken down. Close guard went for the close guard, jump guard, guillotine. No worries for Nemkov. Well, this is how I predicted the fight would go. Victor Nemkov, very intelligent fighter. He knows that Attila Ve has knockout power in his hands, which he's done so many times. Now looking for that Kimura. Is he locked up? Vig posturing onto his hip to find that Kimura. Figure fouring on his wrist. It's hard to see when Emkov has his hand. He could, could have it tied up on the inside of his thigh. He could have a hold of his own shorts. It's hard to see from here. In this situation, Nemkov can grab his own trunks, can grab his own glove, cannot grab the trunks, or in this case, the grappling pants or the glove of Veg to defend. I can see his hand now. He's actually got it up between his legs, which is a, another defense. Stop it being pulled free, but Veg decides to leave. Go. Veg trying to walk up his guard, now closes it. Nemkov on a wide base looking for strikes. Nemkov now walking forward, trying to move Veg back against the lower fence. 2.45 remaining round number two of our main event in the light heavyweight division. Well, the guard is wide open. Victor Nemkov could pass any time if he wants. Quite happy to stay there. Veg actually walking as you see his right leg up on the ring ropes, trying to find leverage, can't do it. Nemkov, machine, a very impressive base. Yeah, I knew he was going to be strong on the ground. He's going to be a lot stronger than what Attila Ve is, and he's proven it. He's seen him fight so many times. A really, really good stand-up striker is Nemkov, but when he gets into trouble striking, he always takes it down, and you know, you've got to go where your advantages are. See Nemkov going body, body, head with the right, then with the left hand. Body triangle now for Attila Veg. Well, I don't know why he put the triangle on because you're just keeping your opponent where he is already succeeding. Virtually impossible to sweep out of a body triangle. The punches are not devastating, but they're counting the, the scoring points. And they're keeping Marco Burrison satisfied with Nemkov holding this top position. Yeah, exactly. As long as the guy on top is working, it doesn't matter how much the guy in the bottom holds on, they will keep it there. You cannot earn a stand-up from the bottom position for inactivity. It's the inactivity of the top fighter. Burson felt that Nemkov not active enough, and there is the stand-up. Surely, to the relief of Attila Veg, but we'll see if he can capitalize. Nemkov had to be careful. He turned his back. Veg stepped forward. Yeah. Uh, not a wise decision to do that. He threw a knee. When you, throw a knee, when you throw a knee at someone who, who, who has intent to take it down, it's quite easy to get it took down. He should have used his, his punches, should have kept on the outside. He closed the gap. He, he, he helped Viktor Nemkov take him down there. Sign of desperation, maybe. Now he's back in the same position where they stood up. Take again. In close guard, recrosses the ankles. What we're not seeing, though, machine from Attila Veg on the bottom, attempts to really posture, to shrimp, to sweep, to throw up his legs. He's using closed guard, open guard, and body triangle, but all defensively. Yeah, that's true. Veg a little more aggressive now. See, walking up the leg, looking for rubber guard. Yeah, Final seconds, round two. He's holding on. He's trying to make Nemkov inactive. I mean, from here, he could 
he could pull the leg over the head and go for Google Plata, but he was just using that as a, as a stall tactic. We are moving to the third and final round. Our main event of the evening, two outstanding light heavyweights, two former champions, Attila Veg had the title in Bellator, and Kronemkov had the title here in M1. Well, another good round, strong round for Victor Nemkov. And there's the, the guillotine attempt, and, and, and Veit jumps guard, he pulls him down. You have to know that your guillotine is on before you jump guard. You've got to know it's on, you've got to know it's there, then you jump guard. But beautiful takedowns by Nemkov, totally dominating the guard position with ground and pound. It is that sequence we saw, it was a reaction by Bay. The jump guard for the guillotine, he felt he was being taken down. Never had it secured, Nepkov immediately popped his head free. So we head into the third round for me, Machine. The story of the opening 10 minutes is that there have just not been answers for Attila Vega on the bottom. Nepkov not doing a lot of damage in top control, but positionally he's very sound. Yeah, he scored two rounds. I think, I think Attila Vega needs a knockout now. A knockout or a submission, but obviously your knockout is what he's really good at doing. He doesn't want to rush anything, he's got five minutes, because he rushed it in round two, tried to a knee to the body and got took down. He doesn't want to chase his opponent. He wants to lure him into that big right hand, because if he chases him, Nemkov is just going to close the gap and take him down again. So a solid 2018 two rounds to none for you from Victor Nemkov. Yes, sir. And I fully agree. Oh, nice. Nice left hand straight down the pipe, that's what he needs to do. Take, take his time, pick his shots. Don't chase him down. Again, Vake told me what he's really been working on with oh. his new fight team in Germany is that being more aggressive. But we've not seen that much aggression. There's the explosion on the takedown. I'm shocked he's actually going for the takedown. Repositioning for Victor Nemkov. Because even if he gets him down, he's got to finish him with ground and pound or with a submission. And it's hard to do against Victor Nemkov because that's what's going to happen. He's such good on the ground, that was it. Ah, what tactic was that? I'm not really sure that was a wise thing to do. Vic literally pulling Nemkov on top of him. Now Nemkov trying to take the back. Vic to his feet. When you, when, when you have a record of no need to head inside. Head inside, and you're down on the scoreboard by two rounds, why take your opponent down when you're not being beaten on your feet? Very, very shocked at that. Frustration yeah. perhaps for Attila Veg. And earning 29 pro MMA wins and earning the Bellator Championship as well as winning a Bellator tournament. Veg has been at his best when he has let his hands and his kicks go. Kyokushin Karate Black Belt can be a very We're unpredictable now. striker. Okay. We're not seeing that by and large here in this fight. I totally agree with you, Sean. Totally agree. He needs to break free from this. He needs to go for figure four on the arms there on the lock. Short knees, hard knees, powerful knees again from Nemkov. Vague trying to roll and you see Nemkov just matching him. Yeah, and that Nemkov's too good. That's why I was shocked that he tried to take him down. His ground game is unbelievable. I said on the, at the beginning of this fight, my synopsis was Nemkov to take it down to Leve to keep it standing. And it's, it's kind of proven my, my tactic was right. Nemkov looking for an arm bar. Now with a front choke, now a dodge yeah. choke, and it is tight! On the dodge, looking to finish! Boko Bruzan to a really close look! Anaconda, goes the Anaconda choke. He needs to wrap his legs around the body of Attila V. Needs to squeeze it up tight, turn to his side. Go chest to chest with him, and then wrap his legs around him and squeeze it tight. You see, hand on the bicep for Nemkov to get the full squeeze. <laughs> on the jawline, really tight. They trying to hook the leg. Let go of it. Well, to the advantage of Attila V. Trying to pass guard. Possibly fishing for an inverted triangle now for Nemkov. Good submission defense on the Anaconda choke by Vague, but if you're defending an MMA, you're losing. That would be for the armbar. 
Oh, he got down. He got out. He's done well. He popping his head free from the head scissors. Snatching the arm. And again, this is Nemkov with grappling, attacking, grappling offense. Vague defending submission attempts. 15th and final minute of the fight. Well, Atilave needs, needs a finish. He needs a finish to win this fight. He's down two rounds. Down the home stretch of our main event. Victor Nemkov, the question for him, how would he respond in his first fight since dropping the M1 Light Heavyweight Championship? Thus far, he's responded extremely well, but nothing has been decided yet. 30 seconds remaining in the final round. Big now looking for hammer fist. Well, Atilave has to get that left hand free. He's got to break it free and then just go for gold. He's got to, he's got to do it. He's trying to get it free, but Nemkov has got that leg crossed really tight. He's not letting him get his hand out. Big stepping over with the knee. More hammer fist from Attila Vang. Still has the left hand trapped. Final seconds now. Big trying to open up. There's the bell. There's the end of the fight. Not flashy, but a very solid performance for that man, Viktor Nemkov. A very thorough performance. Look of disappointment already in the corner of Attila Vague. We await the decision of the three judges scoring cage side, but... Vague just not getting his okay, full we go. arsenal corner, corner. of strikes going. Vague has shown the ability to be a ferocious striker. But not shown that over three rounds and 15 minutes versus Victor Nemco. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard for a unanimous decision in favor of your winner, Victor Nemkov! A very straightforward, unanimous decision win for Victor Nemkov. Disappointment for Attila Vague. He's still an outstanding fighter, but instead of pro win number 30 for Vague, it is pro MMA win number 24 and 30 fights for Victor Nemkov. Thorough, decisive, impressive. Поздравляем всю команду Виктора Немкова. Спасибо за поддержку. Приятно спать в Питере. Ну что, у нас был Андрей Лисицын умер в 2011 году, когда 19 октября можно посидеть от боя ему. Был хороший парень, спортсмен, царство небесное. Жизнь продолжается с победой тебя, Витя! С победой, Виктор Немков! Старый Оскол! ОМК Россия! A genuine thanks to all of you watching worldwide. M1 Challenge 71 from Ice Palace in St. Petersburg, Russia. For everyone at M1 Global and for my broadcast partner, Ian the Machine Freeman, I'm Sean Wheelock. Thanks for watching, everyone. This is M1 Challenge 71.